coverage. This is John Furrier from SiliconANGLE, and I'm joined by CUBE alumni, Sargi Lai, uh, Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Business Unit for Cloud, globally for HP. Welcome back, uh, Sar, great hey, to have great you. Great to be here again. Uh, I've been following your tweets and your photos and getting to view your segment. Great stuff here. Um, you've done an amazing job with the cloud. I mean, you know, you've now been on the CUBE multiple times. When the CUBE, when the CUBE was first trying to figure out the cloud, you were the first guy to say, hey, this is what it looks like and you've laid it out very cleanly. Now it's taking shape. Uh, you're running the business unit for engineering, product management, go to market. Give us the quick update on, on what's happening. Well, we've made a lot of progress. You know, we talked about, when we talked about first last year, right, we talked about the fact that we want to have sort of one unit at HP that covers cloud all the way from consume to build, was management, and you know, that's really what we've been doing. And so, you know, we've made a ton of progress. If you look at our contributions, we talked about OpenStack, we released CloudOS, so we sort of now have that moving. Uh, you know, we talked, one of the other things we did is, you know, we want to make cloud easier for our customers to consume, and so we've built our separate go-to-market organization that handles cloud. So if you want to, if there's an engagement around cloud, we'll send the cloud journey architect over, and he will work with the customer and figure out what the right solution is. From an engineering side, we now have all the core technology under one business unit, Right, that builds the whole uh, core technology both for the public cloud and the private cloud and will to be adopted by the man's cloud all in one place because that helps us create this sort of one consistent architecture for cloud whether it's public, private, or managed. You guys did an amazing job. I got to give you some props on this because when we, we were very, I was very critical of HP's cloud early on, as you remember our first couple interviews. It just didn't, wasn't coherent. It was kind of all over the place. You're like, calm down, settle down. I mean, the good news was OpenStack was a great spot for you guys. You guys had good beachhead in OpenStack and you guys developed that nicely. I want you to, and now, right now, you got cloud in a really good position. So I want you to go back and take me through the play-by-play you know, to some extent, you know, shortened version of how your execution got here. Specifically, you know, you can't just get to a good position. You guys really worked hard. You cleaned up the story, but take us through some of the execution on the sure. product side and the, and, the, and the engineering side. Sir, well, it all starts, first of all, with support from Meg. So, you know, when I took over uh, 15 months ago, at that time, we had a good strategy. The Converts Cloud strategy was there, but, and we had a, a bunch of products. The problem is it was all very siloed. And Meg had realized that, and everybody had realized it, but they're trying to figure out, okay, what is the best way to move forward? And we had, you know, Mark Potts, who's the CTO for Cloud, had come up with a strategy, but we were having execution challenges. And so the first thing we wanted, we wanted to do is for say, okay, well, where are the problems, right? And so we saw there were two challenges. One challenge was that, again, all the engineering was siloed, and even if people had the right motivation, you know, it's very hard, especially in a business unit, to focus on sort of the, the long-term stuff because they're always meeting quarter yeah. to quarter. <laughs> and the other problem we had in the go-to-market was that the go-to-market was very siloed as well. And so, one of the things you want to do in cloud is when you come to a customer, you know, if it was the, the private cloud guy, that was the solution. If it was the public cloud guy, that was the solution. But you know, that's not what you want to do. No, you want to find horrible. out what the problem is. <laughs> so you compete you know, with each other. Everyone's you know, competing with each other internally. Exa yeah, exactly. And you know, that, the customer shouldn't care about the internals of the company, right? That's the first thing. And yeah. so, basically, you know, I, I went back and looked at all this, did some analysis, met with a lot of people, and everybody knew it was the right thing to do, but it's a question of how do you actually do it? And yeah. you know, we put together a plan that said, look, we're going to start consolidating the engineering. The first thing we did is we took part of the Cloud OS development, which was under software, and George, you know, was kind enough to move that under the cloud organization so we can build a core. Right, then we started working with the private cloud guys that are working on cloud systems. We said, okay, you guys can continue doing that, but eventually you got to move to this architecture. At the same time, right, we started working, we pulled in the public cloud group under the same organization because really it's supposed to be the same thing. Yeah. Now in parallel to all this, we started charting out how we're going to consolidate the sales team and create an overlay sales group. And so over the last 12 months, you know, this is a big company, we've been sort of charting the path, but we told you from the beginning, this is what we're going to do, it's just there's a time for everything. For example, you don't, mess around with the sales team during a fiscal year. So we didn't consolidate the sales team until we switched yeah. to the new year. Yeah, on November 1st, now, right? In parallel to that, you know, we brought in a lot of talent, right? One of the things that I wanted to build was a, a very high level product management team to cover all cloud as opposed to having a silo because at the end of the day it all comes down to product management. And so I got Bill Hilf, uh, you know, I managed to convince Bill Hilf, who was one of the GMs of uh, um, uh, Azure to come over, and one of the things that sold them is, you know, he agreed that really the, you know, open source is going to win. 
And that was one of the big selling points. I said, Bill, you know, you've been in open source before. You know this is going to win. You want to go do OpenStack. So we got that in place. We brought Kerry Bailey to help in the sales. He had done in Terramark. And so we slowly built this up, but it all started with, you know, us putting a plan and Meg supporting it. And then in June, you know, we went to the board and said, look, we want to increase the investment dramatically. And because we had managed to execute on the sales side, they supported us. Beautiful. That's fantastic execution. And now Martin Fink, who came over from HP Labs, who's also a CUBE alumni. I think we're going to interview all the execs. Meg, if you're watching, if you're watching this, you're going to come on the cube. I'm going to get Meg Whitman. She's going to come on the cube with us. Um, you, you know, I was impressed. You know, and knowing about Meg Whitman, she's not a super technical person, although she's you know super smart about where the action is. Um, got a lot of good guys around. You. You're one of them, George Kadifa. You mentioned a bunch of other guys. Um, you have a good team, so not surprising the investors. So let's talk about the investment. So Martin Fink comes in. He kind of takes over to look over the store. He's going to really be doing a lot of lab stuff. Uh, no, that's a good thing, more investment. Meg talked about that. What's the big going forward piece? And I want to get your perspective on OpenStack. I want to you know, get it here. Are you guys still committed to OpenStack? And are you going to be the key anchor? Linux had IBM, they put a billion dollars down. Right now, OpenStack needs a leader. Will that, is that going to be HP? So, uh, let me put it to you this way. We're all in on OpenStack. We were supporting OpenStack from day one, and you know, so far we've been proven to be correct. Um, you know, I'm not going to show our hands, but I would just say that the level of investment that we're putting in is going to surprise people. Surprise people dramatically, and not everything that we're doing is clear yet, but it will become <laughs> clearer over time. Yeah. And when I mean over time, I mean in the next 12 months, not in the next 12 years, because cloud is a monthly thing, not a yearly <laughs> thing. Now, you know, I think what's really important in OpenStack right now is to move from a developer focus to a customer focus. Yeah, customers, customers that I talk to and we hear from talk about flexibility. It's the number one thing they need. And they want OpenStack to be that for them. Right now, OpenStack to us seems a little lost. We need, it's a headless leader. I know Rackspace is in there. Love you over there, Rackspace. You know we love you. But you're not, you don't have the mojo on the software side. They're, 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 they're hardware guys. Um, you know, I know HP is too, but they're hosting guys. Um, IBM really made Linux work. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of other market forces Certainly that kind of- From a marketing perspective, they did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> well, HP was kind of forcing with HP UX on the other side. Yeah, we were the first people Sun. to indemnify yeah. <laughs> Linux, just to be a record, right? Martin <laughs> Fisk, thank you very much. And Sun on the other side yeah. too. Well, yeah, I was there, I witnessed that whole movement. The, um, but there was other forces going on. Obviously, you know, the open source was under threat, so Linux had to come together. OpenStack is under the same thing. There's a lot of solidarity in OpenStack right now. I, and Amazon is clearly washing into the enterprise. Mm -hmm. That we, wave is coming in. We're at reInvent, and you're hearing things like VDI, Kinesis, Redshift. These are compelling integrated stack technologies, mm -hmm. and the enterprises will do stuff with Amazon. How deep Amazon will go into the enterprise, that's still going to be a question. So that's a force that, you know, I think is going to accelerate the OpenStack piece a bit, don't you? I think, look, first of all, I think the fact that, you know, cloud now is under Martin Fink should be very telling to anybody who's trying to read the tea leaves because Martin Fink, right, has a long history in open source and Linux. You know, he literally wrote the book on open source. So, you know, that's what gives some people some indication of where our head's at. <laughs> okay. Taking one of the top people in the industry and putting him in charge, you know, oh. putting cloud underneath him. So I think that should be a good indication. You know, look, Amazon, all the power to them. I think they've done a great job in the first wave of cloud, yeah. but the first wave of cloud is a small wave compared to the rest of the waves that are coming. And you know, I, the problem is this, right? If you look at all of Amazon's investment, there are more people working on OpenStack than on Amazon. So Amazon may be ahead, but if you look at the curve, I'd look at the, our slope is better. Well, and you know, Solaris was really good too, but then one morning Linux came along, and while it took a while for, Solar for Linux to go over Solaris today, nobody even talks about it that way. Yeah. And the one thing I think is really interesting is I think OpenStack is doing in a few years what it took a decade for Linux to do. Now, you know there's a lot of things we still got to do, but when I talk to customers today, it's amazing compared to last year, people were interested, everybody's piloting something. Everybody yeah. knows it's, they're piloting the understanding. It's got a lot of white spaces, people are excited. I mean, first of all, we cover OpenStack some of the Cube. You know we were there last oh, yeah. year, we're going to continue to be there. Uh, but I want to get your take on this first wave and the second waves and the bigger waves are coming. The guys that are surfing the waves are developers and applications in the enterprise. Obviously the enterprise is a completely different uh, set of surfers, if you will, surfing those waves, workload requirements, compliance. What's your, what's your vision of that? Okay, I, and by the way, no, no disagreement, open source wins, it's about freedom and that's what it's all about, not just free freedom, to quote George Kadifa. Um, 
what is good? What, what are those? What do those apps look like? What's your? How do you see around the corner there? What's coming next for those, those developers? If Wave One was Amazon, and it's and as well, you said, wait, small. Wave One was low hanging fruit. Okay, it's low okay. hanging fruit, which is things that are very easy to move to cloud in terms of that it's a good fit. The SLA requirements are not as, as significant. The um, security requirements aren't significant. There's always the first wave, and and again, I think it's okay. great. But if you look at the entire, you know, again, average enterprise, 5,000 apps, how many are actually running on a public cloud? Um, yeah. I think the second wave is hybrid. And you know, I know they're shocked that I'm saying that, but you know, we've Who's been- Who's shocked? Yeah, you, no, I'm kidding. But <laughs> yeah, no. I know it's shocking <laughs> that I say that, but I think the second wave is hybrid because the good thing that's been happening over the last year is people realize, look, it's not about this versus that, it's about being able to do both. Okay. So, so let's let's talk about DevOps 2.0 because really at the end of the day that's where it's going, right? DevOps was to me Amazon. A lot of guys who do DevOps love Amazon, especially the developers. But when you get to see more things like Facebook, and we're going to hear Facebook come on stage shortly with George Kadifa's keynote, um, you know, talking about Vertica and the success they've had with Am uh, HP and HP Cloud. Um, the DevOps 2.0 is the enterprise, correct? Where it's easier uh, and a more available. Um, but is that what's your take on that DevOps 2.0? That's a pretty big wave. Well, I mean. I think uh, when you talk, I mean, the, the interesting thing about DevOps is like cloud, right? Everyone's talking about it, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like certain things that people had in high school, right? Everyone's talking about the things yeah. someone else is doing. And I think DevOps, look. Teenage sex is the uh, quote. That's good. You said Gardner it, I analyst, didn't, but, analyst, you know, uh, you've been through it. I think, look, the, the good news is, <laughs> I think that it's all about agility, and so DevOps makes sense to get to agility. You know, we talked about this in one of my, in my keynote here in terms of, you know, if you're running, if it takes you eight months to figure out if what you're building is correct or not, that's probably not a cloud agility, right? You're iterating. DevOps is all about iterating. And I think that the enterprise is starting to adopt that, but it's going to take time because yeah. DevOps itself will have to change to make that work. Well, I would agree with you. And in fact, I would say, our de well, Dave and I's definition of DevOps is guys who eat glass and spit out nails. Uh, so let's talk about Facebook, for instance. Um, developers that, that have more developers to admin ratios. Yeah, they might be hosting on bare metal. And so the enterprise, that's a unique brand. Hyperscale, that's a small black swan kind of that's market. That's right, that's so right. So I, I, I totally agree with that. So DevOps 2.0, let me call it cloud ops. Okay. okay. Maybe it's enterprise, guys who want to be Superman. The I want to be a DevOps when I grow up. I mean, I talk to people in the enterprise, there's not a lot of DevOps qualified people. They're mostly guys, I run the DBA for Oracle, right. I do this admin for NetApp Gear, I do this over here for email on EMC Symmetrics, I got my HP 3 par over here, and I got my servers over here. You know what I'm saying? So it's like now, the, now it's coming, DevOps to me means, how do you make those guys more productive for the programmers, the software developers. Well, I think, again, a lot of those guys you just talked about are working in an ITIL shops, okay? So if you're working in an ITIL shop, it's very regimented and that's fine and that's good for the old world and there's nothing wrong with the old world, it's just that the new apps are not going to be written in the old world because it's too slow. So when you look at DevOps, you know, you're going to see the emergence of this in the new world and there's going to be a migration over time. Uh, you know, because anyone who's building new apps doesn't have that. That's a multi-year journey, wouldn't you agree? Five years? Uh, I, think, I think that it's Three a multi-year journey, but I think from that. From ITIL to new? It's not so much a journey in terms of it's going to be a balance. Over time, more and more is going to be here, and the, 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 I think the ITIL stuff will still be around, but there won't be any big development happening there. So the question is, where is the development going to be? The development's going to be in a new area. The old area is still going to be there, but over time, percentage-wise, there'll be a, le a lot less happening there. Great. And that's okay, because like I said, I mean, the, the, the difference in enterprise is enterprise has installed base, right? That's the difference between consumer and enterprise. You can't just all say, you know what? Everything that happened before doesn't matter anymore. That's not how enterprise works. And so that's one of the reasons we support hybrid. And the same is going to happen in DevOps. You're going to have leakage of DevOps concepts through new apps, and over time, DevOps will adopt it. You know, I think one of the things that I think is very interesting, if you look at how Google does it, right? Google have a separate team called SREs who are actually doing that. And I think that's a really interesting uh, concept. I think some of what that they're doing over there is going to leak into the enterprise, because I don't know that every designer, right, wants to be doing the ops part, and I don't know how it scales in the enterprise. So I think, you know, there's a lot to be developed. I mean, it's early. What's your critical success factors this year? And you're now, you're running the business unit for cloud globally, um, which is the engineering, product management, go to market, market Not development. Go to market, engineering, product management, and go to markets under carry. You got some market. Because I have big expectations <laughs> for that. <laughs> so, but some, you must have some product marketing, market development. No, no, product marketing, but 
It doesn't matter. Me and Carrie are partners, so okay. I'm responsible for the sales as well in terms of we have to deliver a number. So, so you're writing the product requirements. So you're writing the PRDs, your team, right? So Carrie sells the product. Yes. She sells and it. he has everything he needs to be successful. <laughs> <laughs> what are your goals for the next Look, as next I mentioned to you before, right, we have two goals. I can't get into revenue goals, but we obviously have very high growth goals uh, in terms of just overall and then also in terms of hybrid. But, you know, we intend to make OpenStack much more dominant in the industry, and that's going to help everybody, and we intend to be, be part of it. And so just the maturity of OpenStack in the industry is a big goal for HP because it's going to benefit us and others as well. I mean, you guys don't get the props. You and I both talked about this at OpenStack Summit. You guys don't get the props that you guys were founding members of OpenStack, big part of uh, funding it, contributing resources, going back to incorporation. Yeah, uh, and I think we, you, we're you, still running with the CICD chain for all, right? It was Monty Taylor, we're yeah. still doing that. And look, the way I would tell, this is what I would leave you to think about in terms of OpenStack. In the cloud, and we talked about this in the past, right? You're going to make money in many different places. If there's companies you think they're going to make all their money in OpenStack and only there, I think they're going to have a business model problem against HP. <laughs> so good luck with that. Sar, great to have you on theCUBE. Obviously, I know your time's tight. We got the keynote to go, and George Kadipa coming up with some special uh, presentation. Uh, Facebook's going to come out, it's going to be fantastic. Um, the final question true or false? The HP cloud is built on OpenStack. Absolutely. That's true, 100%. Absolutely true. 100%. Absolutely. Okay. All right. What hey, else would we built on? I just want to get down the record because I, you know, it's been kicked around from multiple people. Um, great job, great team. Uh, you guys are gearing up. Congratulations on going to the board for the big investment. Um, doubling down on the OpenStack is awesome. The community is growing fast. You're seeing VMware making some moves with Mirantis. Um, got some competition out there. A lot of differentiation going to happen in the next couple months. Well, one thing on VMware, just let me mention one thing, right? I mean, look, there's a place for VMware. A lot of the customers I talk to saying, look, I have my VMware cloud. I love it, have it, let's keep it here, let's build an OpenStack cloud and let's move things over time. And that's fine, that's good, it's all good. Let me ask you about G Gen General Electric, they have the pivotal relationship. Mm -hmm. Does that affect um, how you guys look at them? I mean, they'd be a great person to partner with. Certainly they have all that medical equipment which is in the heritage of HP. I think, um, look, I think the past area is very interesting. I think one of the questions, and we, we do work with Cloud Foundry, you know, we have our stuff there, but I think the question is, are we at the level and pass yet relative to where it, there's a dominant solution or there's going to be a bunch of different ones? I don't think yet we're in a place where there's going to be a dominant one. So I think there's going to be a bunch of different ones and they're going to be somewhat verticalized and so on. So I think, you know, Pivotal, I think they're doing some interesting things. I think we're going to be seeing some really interesting developments in PaaS over the next year. Well, we're excited to have you on theCUBE and as a friend of theCUBE, we'll always keep in touch and, and uh, keep you up to date on what we're doing and also hear from you and what's happened with the cloud. Great to see HP making their breakout moves, a year of execution under your leadership. Congratulations. Can't wait to hear about the OpenStack news. Uh, make sure you get to us before you break it so we can get out front. Of course, we'll see you at OpenStack Summit. Um, did you go to Singapore? Uh, you guys, Hong Kong. Hong, I mean, Hong Kong. Uh, we couldn't make that I one. I was in Hong Kong. Just a quick two seconds on what happened there. What was the, the oh, big no, news? Look, the big news is, again, a lot more discussion about customers and a lot less discussion about technology. And that's important because as, you know, at the end of the day, OpenStack success is going to be defined by applications, workloads, people using it. That's what's going to define the success, right? And I think yeah. we can see already in Hong Kong, you can see the shift to that. So it looks like we crossed the uh, chasm of um, cloud, don't you think? Finally, finally here? <laughs> I believe so. We'd love to talk. Right. Cloud washing is gone. Now it's software-defined data center washing. This is the year for, for that cloud's reality. Congratulations. You know my pets versus cattle uh, <laughs> analogy, no, right? No, share it. Virtualization, right? When, the way you know if you have a real cloud, if you have servers that have names, so if a server goes down, you take care of it, that's like a pet, right? It's like, because it's a FIDO, yeah. you have a name. If yeah. you have servers that are like are a herd of cattle, right? Just a herd supplying resources, yeah. that's cloud. Yeah. I would argue, you know, VMware, they, they cater to pets, and I think a lot of applications are running on pets. That's okay. Hey, but look at Gia Pets, very popular yeah. around the holidays, you know? <laughs> Star, great to have you on theCUBE. Good luck, and we'll be talking. This is theCUBE live from Barcelona, Spain. This is HP Discover exclusive, Silicon Angle. We keep on theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after the keynote with George Kadifa and Verdict.